Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about triads, and I have a little definition here written for you. A triad is a three-note tertian harmony, and so let's break that down. Harmony meaning more than one note happening at the same time. Three notes meaning it's a chord that contains three notes. This term here, tertian, I want to make sure you know what it means. It refers to harmonies that are built in thirds. That means harmonies that are constructed out of intervals of the third. So make sure you've watched all the interval videos and you know what you're doing with that. Tertian harmony, harmony built in thirds, is really the foundation of what we call tonal music. That's music uh, based on keys and scales that is built using tertian harmony. These are the first types of chords that we use and learn about that are built in the interval of a third. So. Let me draw some diagrams and give you some examples, and we'll classify the different types. So if I were to show you how these are built using a little diagram off the staff here, and say if these are going to be built in thirds, one combination I could use could be to put a major third on the bottom and a minor third on the top. So this would mean there's my three note harmony. If the distance between the bottom note and the middle note is a major third, the middle and the top is a minor third, then uh, we would get this quality. Let's say make it from F. So the interval of a major third above F, or another way of thinking about it is the third note of F major is going to give us A. And a minor third above A would give us C. The lowered third note of A major would give us C. F, A, and C gives us the quality major. This is referred to as a major triad. I'm also going to ask that we analyze what this outside interval is here. That is the interval from the lowest note to the top note as they are arranged right now. So that would be from F to C is going to give us a perfect fifth. And that's important, so hang on to that uh, for later. First type is called major. It's when we stack a major third and a minor third. Well, what if I did this a different way but reversed them? So I put a minor third down here and I put a major third up here on the staff, still starting from F. Now a minor third above F, if a major third was A, a minor third is going to be A flat. And now a minor third, or excuse me, a major third above that A flat, third note of A flat major, would give me C. So now I've got F, A flat, and C. The quality of this type of triad is called minor. Let's again look at that outside interval. So from here to here, from F to C, it's the same notes as it was before. The outside interval is still a perfect fifth. Okay, so we've got major and we've got minor. Now, if I'm building these things just out of major and minor thirds, then that should mean that another way I could construct this could be two minor thirds. So if I went minor third and minor third, what would that look on the staff from F? We already know a minor third up from F is A flat. A minor third up from A flat, if a major third was C, that would mean the minor third would be C flat. Okay, so this type of triad is called diminished. Now let's check the outside interval from bottom to top. We no longer have a perfect fifth. Instead, on the outside, we have a diminished fifth diminished fifth. So the terms match up. One more type. If I could go major third, minor third, minor third, major third, two minor thirds, well then I should be able to go two major thirds. Major third here, major third here. What would that give me on the staff? F, A is a major third, major third above. A was going to give me C sharp. This type of triad is called augmented. And I think you already know what the outside fifth is going to be here. From F to C sharp is going to give me an augmented fifth. So there are the four types of triads with their qualities in a way you can think about them using intervals. But I also encourage students to try to be able to 
manipulate these triads thinking about scale degrees. So if we thought of all of these triads as it relates to the key of F, which notes from that key would it contain? Well, major, any major triad just consists of the first, third, and fifth note of the key of the bottom note of what we call the root of the triad. So then if I were to apply that same logic to F, A flat, and C, a minor triad consists of the first, the lowered third, and the fifth note, starting from any note. Pick any note, pretend that's tonic of a major key, and go one flat, three, five, and it would give you minor. So then what would diminished be? One flat, three again, but this time flat, five. Augmented, one, three, and sharp, five. So you can think of these however you want to think about them, whether using intervals or using scale degree terms. I should at this point point out to you that I've been calling them like bottom, middle, and top notes, and you really don't want to be in the habit of referring to it like that, because in subsequent videos we'll talk about how the bottom note isn't necessarily always the bottom note. What does hold here is that Right now, what we're calling the bottom note, we should call the root of the triad. The middle note, we should call the third. And the top note, we should call the fifth. And this fits in with the scale degree terminology that we were using over here in red next to the notes on the staff. One, three, five, root, third, and fifth. Okay, so how do we take all of this and use it to identify? So here's a bunch of triads that you need to identify with their quality, major, minor, diminished, or augmented. Oh, also when you're labeling this, I tell my students to use capital M for major, lowercase m for minor, but put a horizontal line over the M so I can tell the difference between your upper and lowercase m's. Lowercase letter D for diminished, capital letter A for augmented. So let's look at this first example, E, G, and B. What type of triad is that? What quality is that? A couple different ways you can do it. You can measure the intervals and say, okay, E to G. We know it's a third. Is it major or minor? Well, E to G sharp would be major, so that means this is a minor third. G to B is a major third because if G were our keynote, the third note of G major would be B, so that makes it a major third. So what type of triad is a minor third and then a major third on top? That is minor. And another way you can think about it is to use the one, three, five, the root third, fifth, and think, okay, if this were in the key of E, I would default to what's major. What's one, three, and five in the key of E? This all comes back to memorizing your scales. What's one, three, and five in the key of E? E, G sharp, and B. I don't have E, G sharp, and B. That would be major. I do have E, G natural, and B, which means I'm looking at a 1, a flat 3, and a 5, which makes it minor. Okay, so either way you want to do it. Next one, D flat, F, and A. Let's, let's do it using the 1, 3, 5. So what would a major triad look like on D flat? What is 1, 3, and 5 in D flat? That would be D flat, F, and A flat. I don't have that, though. I have D flat, F, and A natural. So that means I'm looking at a 1, a 3, and a sharp 5 for this example, which is augmented. So do the rest of these examples, pause the video, and use either method, looking at how the actual interval construction or comparing what a major triad would be, 1, 3, 5, to what you're actually looking at. Number one, F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp is indeed one, three, five in the key of F sharp. So that means this is a major triad. G, B flat, and D flat, maybe I'll talk about it with intervals this time, are two minor thirds stacked on top of each other. G to B flat's a minor third, B flat to D flat's a minor third, meaning this quality is diminished. In bass clef, B, D sharp, and F sharp, that is 1, 3, and 5 in the key of B, so it's major. Number 4, A, C, E. I've got a minor third here, 
A to C, major third here, C to E. So minor third, major third gives me minor as my quality. B flat, D flat, and F. Well, in the key of B flat, 1, 3, 5 is B flat, D, F. So I have B flat, D flat, F, which means I'm looking at 1 flat, 3, and 5, which is minor. Last one, number 6. E flat, G, and B natural. Well, E flat, G, B flat would be major. So it looks like I have a sharp fifth, a raised fifth. So that makes this augmented. That's how you identify these. Now, like all things we do in theory, we also have to be able to write them. Here's the setup for writing triads initially. You'll notice that I've given you a note and that I've given you a quality underneath it, but that I've also started each column with root, third, or fifth. What that means is the note that I've given you is either the root in the first line, the third in the second line, or the fifth in the last line. So in the example, I'm telling you that D is the root of a major triad. So all I need to do then is to write 1, 3, and 5 in the key of D, which is D, F sharp, and A. Go ahead and do 1, 2, 3 as roots. If B is the root of a minor, which is what the, second, uh, the first question there is asking you, then I would need to write 1 flat 3 and 5 in the key of B. B major is B, D sharp, F sharp. So, you know, when I say flat 3, it doesn't mean add a flat sign. It means lower by a half step. So that would give me B, D natural, F sharp. 2, augmented. So let's think intervals maybe. A major third above B flat is D. A major third above D is F sharp. Yes, it is okay for these to mix accidentals like this. Diminished from C sharp. Well, C sharp major would be C sharp, E sharp, G sharp. Lowering the third and the fifth would just take away the sharps. C, E, G. Okay, now the next line starts to get a little more complicated. The note that I've given you is the third. It's the middle note of the triad. So if B flat is the third of a minor triad, I want you to write the root in the fifth, the note below and above. What you should do first is just put the notes where they go on the staff. If B flat's a third, the root is some kind of G, the fifth is some kind of D. Now figure out if you need accidentals, which in this case, you don't, because if B flat is the lowered third note, that would mean B natural would be the unlowered note that would correspond to the major key. B natural is the third of G. So that means our root is G and a perfect fifth above G is D. Try the ones for thirds. First thing you should do is fill in the notes on either side. I have a lot of students that just go straight down the paper and they do this first, kind of like a first things first. Those are where the notes are supposed to go. So the purple given note is the third, just like the question asks. And now we'll determine if we need accidentals. Here's um, a very important rule about this. You cannot add an accidental to the note that has been given to you in the question. So in this case, the purple notes. Even if your end result produces the major triad that I'm asking for, say in question one, you can't add accidentals to the given. You can't change the premise of a question. You can't like on your math homework, like erase a three and make it a four in the question because that would be easier for you. So I can't change this C that's written, but I can change the A and the E if I need to. So if this is a major triad, C is the third in what major key? A flat. So this gets a flat. What kind of E is in A flat major? E flat. Some students, I'll always get a paper that has, didn't write the flats on the A and the E, but just added a sharp to the C. That is a major triad, but it's not the one the question was asking you about, okay? Number two, to write a diminished if F sharp is the third. Okay, well, I gotta go down a minor third from A, that would give me F sharp, and up a minor third from A, that would give me the C that I already have. Three, augmented if E is the third. Okay, well, I know that 
one and three stay the same in augmented from major. So if E is the third of a major, C natural is good. And now I need to go an augmented fifth above C or a major third above E that gives me G sharp. Same logic applies here to writing these with fifths. If I give you the fifth and tell you F is the fifth of a diminished, it's some kind of D, some kind of B. So you could go straight down the line and do this first, just to put the notes where they go, and then determine if you need accidentals. In the case of the first one, we don't. Why don't you try one, two, and three, and we'll go over it. To make number one a major, if G sharp is the fifth of a major, that would mean the key that we're in is C sharp, so that would need to be C sharp, E sharp. To make A sharp the fifth of an augmented, that would mean it's a sharp five, so the unsharp five would be A, which would give me D as the root, so I don't need to alter that, but I do need to add F sharp. To make minor, where I have E flat as the fifth, E flat is the fifth of A flat, so A flat, lower the third, C flat. So there's a real basic overview of you for the four types of triads, how to identify them, and how to write them.